Good morning. I'm going to teach you this morning. I don't have a book in here, but i got a stand in here. We'll see how this works. I'll probably flip over it three times. If you weren't here for round one of the round ten sermon series, I want to refresh your memory or bring to your, your knowledge what we talked about. We talked about a couple of different things. We talked about the, the selection process. We talked about how we selected this horse based on it having things that we liked about it, its confirmation, about its, 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 its makeup, how it's built. We talked about papers and how it comes from really good working papers of, of the working horse, ranch type horse. And it has specific things that we desire. Along with that selection process, we talked about how Christ selected us unconditionally. How he chose us before we were even born in our mother's womb to be his children. What a great comparison. From there we moved to resistance. We talked about how that horse, before that horse trusts us as the trainer, how that horse resisted us. How when we put pressure on it, it would run from us and try to move different directions because it didn't have that trust. And what we were looking for was that horse to do some things. We are looking for that horse to submit, to turn, to come towards us, to, to look at us, to recognize us as a friend. Uh, and, and we talked about how when we resist God, we run from God in that same way. But how we seem to just keep going in circles, making those trips, if you will, around the round pin a lot. How we don't always do what God calls us to do until we finally find that trust in Him and turn to Him. Now I want to I take Sonny around the pin this morning just a little bit. We're going to move that horse around. And as we work with this horse day by day, week by week, we're going to push this horse. We're going to ask it to do things it doesn't necessarily want us to do. Whoa. Whoa. We're going to take a step back from that horse. We want that horse to trust us. We see that horse that begins to look at us, lift us, lift us a little bit, cheap, and a little bit there, and it's trusting us. But it's still not stepping towards us like we really want to. And so we're going to pressure that horse to go some more. We're going to train a little bit more of them. Whoa. Horses hurt and hurt. We'll step back and see that horse The trust factor is beginning to be there. So what we do, we have to, we have to move from that, from that resistance stage because the horse is giving us what we want to do. We have to love on that horse just a little bit. Many of you are familiar with scripture that talks about trusting, that talks about love. Let me share it with you again this morning. In the book of Proverbs, and I've shared the scripture many times in the last days, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. As we begin to see this horse submit to us as the trainer, as we begin to see Him turn to us, take that step towards us, we need to consider ourselves in the horse's shoes for a minute. We need, to, we need to cover today, in round two of the round three series, we need to cover today what it means to trust and obey. You see, God asks of us to trust Him. But in the beginning, we're a little bit unsure. We're a little bit skeptical. We're running around that round pit of life. And, and we, we are running rampant with nowhere to go, no, nothing for sure in our life. But as we begin to form that trust, as we begin to realize that God's not out to hurt us, He's not the one that makes bad things happen to us, we have to begin to consider different things. In the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, the 17th verse, it says, Those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our God, will be turned back in utter shame. Now I want to consider that scripture for just a bit this morning. For those that trust in idols, those who make things other than God, they're God. And you go, preacher, what exactly is that talking about this morning? Well, I'm going to share it with you. How many of you have ever put your focus 100% on, on that billboard or on that almighty dollar making a buck in life? We do that. We, we, get, we get to be, that becomes our idol. Oh, I want more money. Nice so I need more money. Well, when we begin to trust God to provide those things, and we quit leaning on our understanding of that, and we 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 put turn our trust to Him in that, 
It's amazing how things change in our life. Now, I'm not saying you're going to become a billionaire by any means, but I will say that you'll provide your needs. Miss Alice this morning mentioned that she uh, had a tree that was laying over her place, and that some of the guys in the church agreed to come and do it for no money. But she had this little bit of money set aside to help those guys and that endeavor to make that happen. But then God had a different plan for that money. He, she had a need that had to be met, and she had just the exact amount of money to do that based on God being there in her life and trusting in Him and He's provided both to happen. Lots of times we need to do that. Sunny has been in the round pen. She's been working. She's gaining that trust. She's finally turning and submitting just as we should turn and submit to Christ. So this morning we're going to ask her to do just a little bit more. This morning we're going to take the halter. We're going to put that halter on Sunny and we're going to we're going to ask her to give us some of She said she had totally trusted me. Right? Really? You know what I mean? We're going to put that halter on her this morning. And we're going to ask her to give us things that that a horse doesn't naturally do. Come on. We ask her to come forward. And she takes us. Sometimes she won't always do that. Sometimes we ask her that and she doesn't. And when she decides to balk, she decides to not have that trust. We have to reaffirm that we're gonna we're gonna do what we need to do with her. We're gonna train her. Now I'm gonna ask her to do just some simple things that this morning, such as I'm gonna lift up on her and I'm gonna ask her to flex. I'm gonna ask her to come back and she she does that. She gives me that this morning. We might be going the other direction with that. We'll come to the other side. We'll ask her. To, really? We'll ask her to give. And she'll flex around there. She's actually giving to what we call pressure and release. If we put the pressure on her to bring her around, she will bring that hand around. She will flex based on what we're asking. We're putting the pressure on her to do that, and she's releasing that fear. Folks, I have to share with you this morning that that's what God asked us to do. He asked us to, to relieve the pressure from our life to, to trust in Him with a pressure and release method. Now, somebody's coming along quite well. I'm excited about breaking this horse and training this horse, if you will. Many of the old timers, and there's several of you old timers here, might have had a different theory on how do you bring a horse to do what you want it to do. Some of the old timers believe that the answer to training or to breaking a horse was to throw a saddle on, sell them up to a pole, throw a saddle on, jump on top of them, dig in deep, and just hang on tight until the war was over, if you will. But folks, there's more than one method of training in this world. And, and in Christ, I encourage you this morning to not go that hard route. How many of y'all this morning would say you've been to the School of Hard Knocks, the University of Hard Knocks, and graduated from there? Woo, most of us here can say that we've been there and we've done that. But you see, we don't have to go that route. I want to share with you another scripture this morning from the book of 1 Corinthians. I shared this just a couple of weeks ago in a wedding for Kevin and Shelby. I talked about love. And you see, the love route that we can go, the, the love route of training one another can be a whole lot more easy going and build that trust faster. And then let me explain that to you after reading this scripture. The book, Buddha, the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 4th verse says this. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. How many of you remember this scripture from a wedding you've been to? Amen. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. You see, I, I could get one bad gun frustrated at this horse for not giving me what I want it to give me, what I want it to give it to me. I don't even need the Bible verses to get out of my Bible. I could get frustrated with this horse when it doesn't give me what I want it to. I could get mad, I could pop that whip, I could yell, I could scream, I could do all of those things. But that doesn't teach trust. You see, if we're truly going to become trusting of one another, if we're going to trust in the Lord and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we've got to do that by means of love. 
We've got to love what we're involved with. Lots of people in this old world have dealt with donkeys or jacks or guineas or mules. How many of you think that that animal is extremely rebellious and hard-headed? That's kind of been the perception that goes with that animal because they'll fall, they'll stuff his lock down and won't do what you want them to do. I had the opportunity just a few weeks ago to be in a trail ride at Seabar Ranch. And as I was out there, there was a man riding the mule. And I asked him, I said, how long did it take you to break that thing? And he said, well, let's get one thing straight about off the back, preacher. You don't break a mule. You can it. And I had no other thinking about that. I had to think about what that meant. To break, to take the spirit from, is one thing. But you never truly had that trust, that friendship. And I find that it's very important in training horses, in training your family, uh, uh, and in our training in life that God would have for us. It's very important for us to, to have that trust. And that trust only comes by having love. And so this morning I would say that, that our key to have true trust, to truly find that trust in our Lord, is to find the love of God. To allow him to show us, to guide us. This horse is giving to me a lot more today. The horse is a very loving spiritual horse. And it's very willing. It wants to please. And I would ask you this morning, how many of you feel that way about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? How many of you feel that you hopefully trust him? It's easy to, to submit just a little bit on Sunday morning. Or maybe when you have a tragedy or something like that in your life, to submit just a little. But how many of you truly found friendship? Who truly seek Him? In order to do that, we have to obey. That comes to the second part of the second lesson here. How do we go about obeying? How do we obey our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, we have to follow the plan that's been placed for us. And I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to find that trust in your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not going to work the horse just a lot this morning. Uh, she's given me what I've asked for. She, she, has, she has given to those movements that I've asked for this morning. She's shown me that she'll submit. Folks, that, that's as far as we need to go today on that. But I will share with you that you in turn are the same way. I am the same way. We need to trust in our Lord and Savior. We need to obey our Lord and Savior. We need to do that by learning. And friends, this morning, I want to ask the question, and this is a tough one this morning, how many of you love your dad? It's Father's Day, isn't it? Special day. I can go around the room, I can start right over here and work all the way around over here, and I can ask that question of what it is that you love about your dad. And most everybody would have something different to say. But one factor is there that most of you would say you trust your dad. You know that he'll be there for you. Maybe it's been that your dad got you out of some hairy situations in life. He stood up for you when somebody else wouldn't. He's been there for you. Folks, I want to share this with you this morning. That's the same type of love that we look for in this animal. It's the same type of love that our Lord looks for in us. To truly trust, to truly submit to him. Fathers, thank you for that. That's nice. Couldn't have happened to a better spot to build it, could it, honey? <laughs> Eat good. I would say this to you this morning. Trust your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Find that friendship in Him by having a love for Him, by willing to do for Him. Just as your fathers have done for you throughout your life in such a way that you want to honor them today, we want to honor our Lord and Savior, the greatest Father that ever lived. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, this morning, just as we took Sonny around and around again, we looked for that submission, Lord, and we received that. God, this morning, we submit to you as the greatest father that ever lived. Lord, as we begin to, to look at the pressure and release, as we begin to take that force and put a halter on it and ask that horse to, we put pressure on that horse to flex in one direction and then the other. We ask that horse to give to a desire that we have. 
Lord, we know that you desire for us to turn to you as well. And just as the horse turned and flexed it, and like we asked, we release that, that, that knee broke. We release that pressure. And God, we recognize the fact that when we turn to you, our troubles are released. Not that they're not there, not that we don't see trials and tribulations in life, but Lord, we're released to deal with them in a simple, easier fashion, knowing that you are our great provider and that you will not let us live. In the round of life, Lord, I just ask this morning, if there's somebody here that's never taken the opportunity to trust and obey you, that they would find the heart this morning, find it in their heart, the courage in their heart, to finally stop running the laps around the ground in their life and turn to you. Father, I remember so many years ago when I got those sweaty palms, when I began to get that, that feeling like I needed you. I needed something more than mom and dad to give me. I needed something that would never not be there, but that would always be there. I remember Fall Street Church Camp. Lord, finding myself out in the middle of the aisle, walking down to the front, not really knowing what was going on. But I knew it had something to do with something greater than me. God, that, that step of faith that you allowed me, God, I pray this morning that you give that same step of faith to anyone here that's never asked to have a true friend in the round of life, a true father in Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and you never asked Jesus to come into your heart and take control of your life, we're going to give you the opportunity to do that this morning. God says in Matthew 28, there he says to go out baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, making disciples of all the nations. God chose you. God allows you the opportunity of the best friend ever that a man could ask for. And I encourage you this morning to share with me in a sincere prayer. If you never ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to take control of your life, to be your ultimate trainer, to do so this morning, this is prayer. Father God, Jesus, my way has not been working. I've been making those trips around that round again just like an old horse has. And I seem to be getting nowhere, but back, back and forth and through the same things I've been through. Jesus, I need a clear path. I need, to, I need to get out of that just going in circles, Lord. Jesus, would you come into my heart this morning? Would you take control of my life? Would you become my trainer in the round of line? Teach me the way that I should go. Show me that narrow path. Keep me on it. Jesus, what I'm asking this morning is would you wash my sins away and you make the body so you get through over in life. Just like the horse wants to be our friend, Jesus, I want you to be my friend. Would you train me in the way that I should go? With head bowed and eyes closed this morning, if you just prayed that prayer, ask Jesus to come into your heart, take control of your life, be your trainer in the round of our life. Wash away your sins. Please just slide your hand up in the air this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we struggle time after time to truly submit 100%, give that freedom away to you, trust in you. Jesus, we find ourselves with the pressures of life behind us and going through that round for a while, time after time after time. But God, I ask this morning that you would help us to be free to you so that there will be no more questions. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in your mighty name. Amen. I would say to you this morning, lots of things can go on, lots of things can happen in the life of living. About five years ago, I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to meet a young lady that's a big part of our church. And I'm just going to say what it really was. She is all there is fire. She became a part of our Red Rodeo team, our youth Red Rodeo team here. I think 
sure she didn't come to preach from time to time. She felt things in her teammates. She got plum mad at them. She'd get upset with them. She'd yell and scream at them. She stole a one life fit. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Come here. Now I'm going to share something with you. She was like the unbreakable horse, okay? I wanted to give up on her. I was like, dear God, what do you put this one in front of me for? But I didn't give up. I believed in her. Why? Because I saw something in her. I saw something a whole lot like myself. Not in looks wise. She's a lot prettier than I am. But I saw something in her. I saw a leader in her. But it was kind of hidden by her upsetness, her, her troubles, the things that were bothering her. Five years later today, she leads our little children's group upstairs. She's an avid member within everything we do in our church. And I got a hard day going because today I got to say goodbye to her. And you go, what do you mean you got to say goodbye to her? Is she going to another church? Nope, she's growing up. She graduated. She's moving on to bigger and better things. She's going to be going away for a while doing things that she needs to do. And I want to share something with you. Come here. You can come around me and you know all about this. Give her something. Oh, my I got something special for you, Kim. I got a keychain here. On one side of this keychain it says just believe. And on the other thing, it says, on the other side it says things happen for a reason. Believe? Why? Because you never come into things not believing that you'd be able to achieve them. The rope head. Remember all the burns on the fingers from the rope burns? You remember coming off the horse on the end of the round pit down there? I mean, on the end of the ring down there? You got back on. You never quit. The ranch rodeos that we traveled to, the teaching that you've done our kids. How many mornings did you go, oh, God, yeah, they're driving me nuts up there? You remember that? That's why I was saying for you, because you never gave up. But the backside says everything happens for a reason. The things you're going through, the trying times. Remember when they didn't let us in the hospital to see the loved one? We got a little dropped up, didn't we? We wanted to both put on our fight machine, didn't we? I mean, you remember Ruth and Mr. Ruth and our best friend in the folks here? You kept going. Everything happened for a reason. You remember seeing people coming out with our church through the years? You never quit believing. I love you, you know. You got a lot going for you in life. You'll always be a member right here. And thank you for teaching our little bit. And uh, I love you. That's the senior that you hate to leave right there. I want to see him go from zero to hero, if you will. Uh, Tony don't want you to go neither. Look to see you around, though. She promised me that on Wednesday night she thought she could steal a little bit of car up from college and come back this direction to help with our youth. We have youth leaders. We look forward to that. Jess, I thank you for all you've done. Folks, the true explanation for trust and obey. In the beginning, she was, she was in this round and on. She didn't trust. She didn't want to trust. She's mad. She's frustrated. Me and you find yourself in the same spot. But then when they finally trust, when she finally trusted her Lord and Savior, when she finally saw that he wasn't there to hurt her, but they helped her to become a best friend, she did that. We're glad to have her part of our church community here in the same boat. If you're that person, though, that is still not finding that trust, I encourage you to talk to the preacher, talk to one of the, the people who have been in the church for a while. Talk to a friend. Because it's when you're finally able to trust in that sense that things get better in life for you. I'm going to say one more prayer and we'll turn it back over to y'all. Father God, I thank you for Jesslyn. I thank you for all that she means to our church, to our youth group, to our church family. God, I just ask that you would protect her as she goes on that journey of life. Allow her 
to continue to have that foundation that you instilled upon her through those trials and tribulations that she's been through. And God, today, she turns from our baby girl into a young lady. Put that hedge of protection around her. Give her the strength of a mighty warrior to continue to serve you as Christ's child in the realm of life. In your name we pray, amen.